Welcome back to Mason Talks. So the Cleveland Browns bye week has come and gone. We're about at the midway point of the NFL's season. And the Browns are currently 3-5 and five and will be preparing to take on the Miami Dolphins this upcoming Sunday. And if we're all going to be completely honest in this midseason assessment of the team, this is a disappointing position for them to be in you are three and five you are third in the AFC North and quite frankly you should be at the bare minimum five and five possibly even six and four which obviously would have left you atop the AFC North but you know you're three and five didn't capitalize on the opportunities of the of those times. And you know what? Life goes on. And the Browns are still, technically, in the race for the AFC playoff picture. And it's grim, it's bleak, it's very unlikely. But there still is a path and there still is a little bit of hope left for the Browns' playoff chances. Now, there's two sections of the season left that we need to look at the first section which we are going to address are the next three games that the browns play against the dolphins the buffalo bills and the tampa bay buccaneers the other games are the final set that 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 final section of the year those last six games that deshaun watson will be playing in and both of those uh it basically you need perfection for your playoff hopes to really be alive but let's start with these next three games I think that in order for your playoff hopes to be alive when Deshaun Watson comes back you basically need to you need the Browns to win these next three games I don't think there's really a scenario in which you can lose one or two of these games and still make the playoffs. And it, it, it's possible. I do think it's possible. Let's start with Miami. First and foremost, the Miami Dolphins have a really good offense. You just simply have to hope that your defense plays like they have the last couple of games because the Browns' defense, has they, they played pretty good against the Baltimore Ravens, uh, and then they played very good against the Cincinnati Bengals. And, you know, if they come out of the bye week refreshed and continuing that sort of uh, streak of good play, I think you can slow down the Dolphins' offense enough. And the last couple of weeks, Miami has really struggled stopping the run. In the last, I think it was two or three weeks, they've been averaging 140 rushing yards given up to opposing teams per game. And that, of course, highlights a great opportunity for you to go out and and run the football all, all over them with Nick Chubb and a hopefully still motivated Kareem Hunt. So if your defense plays really good, if you run the football a ton and stick to your game plan, and if you get a good Jacoby Brissett game, which is key, I think you can beat the Miami Dolphins. That obviously is the first starting point that you have to hit. Then comes Buffalo. And listen, I'm not going to deny... The Buffalo Bills are an absolute juggernaut. They're the best team in the AFC, I think, by a wide margin. The question is, the one question that all Browns fans should be watching is how serious is the elbow injury of their starting quarterback, Josh Allen? He has an elbow injury, which I believe at this point, Sean McDermott, their head coach, has listed him as day-to-day. Um, But they haven't really given a firm timetable as to how serious that injury is uh, and how long he's going to be out, how long he'll be unavailable to play. So, you know, Josh Allen could very well be suiting up for the Bills this coming Sunday. Or there could be a scenario in which he has to miss a couple of weeks. That is the scenario that the Cleveland Browns need to be hoping for. And obviously, you never want to see anybody injured, whatever, the whole, you know, big injury spiel. But if the Browns were playing the Bills, led by Case Keenum, as opposed to led by Josh Allen, their chances of winning that game would be significantly higher. 
And, you know, I don't want to completely discredit the team. They're obviously very good. They have a very good defense. They have a lot of offensive weapons. And we saw last year with Case Keenum being our starting quarterback that that dude can win games when he has a good team around him. So obviously it's not like it'd be a walk in the park, but I think the Bills go from being a juggernaut to at least somewhat beatable if Josh Allen isn't playing. That's a key game you you basically have to win. And then you play Tampa Bay. And, you know, honestly, Tampa Bay has been mediocre all season. They just won their past game against the Los Angeles Rams. Basically on a miraculous Tom Brady turn back the clock game winning drive where Brady led the team down the field and they scored a touchdown. But honestly, outside of that, the Buccaneers have been mediocre and and I think that they are a team that the Browns could absolutely win. Now, that being said, I thought the same thing about the Jets. I thought the same thing about the Falcons. I've thought the same thing about a lot of teams. I thought the same thing about the Patriots and the Browns basically proved me wrong in every single one of those scenarios. So this is a beatable team. I think that at this point in his career, Tom Brady is a beatable quarterback, but you'd have to go out and get the job done. So right there, if you can follow that game plan and get those three victories, you'd get yourself back up above 500, you'd be 6-5, and and then you would be handing the keys over to Deshaun Watson. And I think there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period where Deshaun Watson has to shake off a bit of rust, seeing as he hasn't played in basically two seasons. But then you look at the schedule uh, following that, you'd have Watson against the Houston Texans, and the Texans are abysmal. Then you'd be playing the Cincinnati Bengals, who uh, the, the, the Browns have completely dominated that franchise for the past four years. The Baltimore Ravens, which would be a fight, but I think you can beat the Ravens uh, at that point if Deshaun Watson's getting into some sort of a groove. You have the Saints, which is a winnable game. You have the Commanders, which is going to be an even more winnable game as they continue to um, just fall apart as a team and as a franchise. And and with, you know, Dan Snyder basically having all of his off, you know, legal issues or whatever. So that's a winnable game. Uh, you play the Saints and you play you play the Steelers. So looking at those final six games, the only one that I'd really be deeply troubled about is that Baltimore Ravens matchup because the Baltimore Ravens has has had the they've had the Browns number for, you know, decades at this point. But other than that, I think you can honestly look at that situation. uh, You can look at those last stretch of games and say Deshaun Watson could go five and one uh, and and and, you know, I I think that that's realistic looking at how bad those other teams have been. Now, if you blow that up and look at it from a from a from a sky high perspective, basically what I'm saying is for the Browns hopes to be alive, they'd have to finish the season on a on a 9 and 1 run. They'd have to win 9 out of their last 10 games and and finish 11 and 6. And you know what? You know, ten and seven could be be a feasible way into the playoffs, but I think you'd be sitting a lot more uh, comfortably with with an eleven and six record. So obviously, there's a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of of wiggle room there. But those that that's the situation that you are in as as the Cleveland Browns franchise right now, and it's a situation that you put yourselves in by not winning the winnable games early in the year, the games that we talked about all off season. Um, so it's, it's a difficult scenario, but I still think that there's a path that this Browns team can follow to make the playoffs. I mean, we've seen crazier things in the past. We saw back in, I think it was 2019, 2018, uh, the Colts who were led by now their, their former head coach, Frank Reich, they started the year like one in five, and then went on some crazy run to make the the wild card. Like we've seen crazier things happen in the NFL, um, but th- this sure would be something a- 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 of gigantic proportions for the Browns to pull off. Um, so so basically, it just starts looking at this one game at a time, and I'm sure that's what they've been talking about in Berea. I'm sure that's what Kevin Stefanski's been hammering into these players' heads all 
the last couple of weeks is you just got to beat Miami and then after that you just got to beat Buffalo and and so on and so on until Watson comes back and then you just can continue following that path so it would be an incredible uh thing to witness this Browns team going nine and one or eight and two down the stretch but that's basically what it would take at this point for the Browns to make the playoffs let me know in the comments do you think it's physically possible for this team to make the postseason thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show I will see you in my next episode goodbye